20 years ago today, on August 11, 1999, a tornado ripped down through downtown Salt Lake City. And previous to that, many people thought that tornadoes simply don't happen here in Utah. But of course they do. In the aftermath, former Fox 13 meteorologist Steve Barron broke down the science behind the storm. Steve still works for the Fox 13 parent company. Here's a look back at his special report, The Secrets of the Storm. Secret number one is an amazing fact that you'd never even guess could be true. Looking at this time lapse of the tornado, it appears that the funnel cloud drops out of the base of the storm as it passes over the city. But in slow motion, you can see what's really going on. This tornado did something few storms of its power do. It started on the ground, look right here, and then reached up into the cloud. National Weather Service meteorologist Larry Dunn explains this secret of the storm. When people think of tornadic thunderstorms, typically they think of a big rotating thunderstorm. The rotation associated with the tornado occurs initially up high in the storm and works its way down to the surface. That would be a classic Midwest thunderstorm. The thunderstorm that we had here in Salt Lake City occurred in a different way. The rotation begins near the ground and, uh, and actually works its way up as the storm is building. The updraft associated with the storm actually draws the rotation upward and just like a figure skater tightening their arms and spinning faster, that same thing is happening to the air. The second secret of the storm is how it hid from hundreds of thousands of watts of Doppler radar power scanning the skies over Salt Lake City. The answer comes from the heart of tornado country, Norman, Oklahoma. Here in Tornado Alley, researcher Don Burgess is pouring over data from the storm. Well, this storm developed very quickly. At 12 noon, there was no storm. At 12.15, the storm started. At 12.30 was the first sign of rotation. And at 12.40, the tornado began. So this was very rapid development. Using a special computer to display the actual radar data from the storm, Burgess showed me how it picked up the tornado. The red triangle in the middle of your screen is in downtown Salt Lake City at the exact spot where the storm touched down. The tornado is striking downtown, though, when we see this signature. So there's not much lead time. Lead time is the amount of warning you get before the storm. Which brings us to secret number three. You might call this the secret radar. On the shores of the Great Salt Lake, the Federal Aviation Administration just finished building this terminal Doppler weather radar. It's designed to detect wind and rain in the lowest levels of the atmosphere, and it picked up the Salt Lake tornado as it formed in much more detail than the radar the National Weather Service used the day of the storm. But on August 11th, the only people watching that terminal radar were in the control tower of Salt Lake International Airport. Now, work is underway to get the terminal radar data linked up to the National Weather Service. Both radars show the formation of the tornado very rapidly in less than 10 minutes' time, from, from nothing to tornado in, in less than 10 minutes. And so, it's not going to give you a whole lot more lead time, but once the event is underway, it's going to give you a better look at what's going on. The fourth and final secret of the storm is by far the most perplexing. In a state where 80% of the land is either a forest, a park, or a bombing range, why did the storm end up in the middle of the Mountain West's largest city, cutting a path right through downtown, up a canyon, and into the mountains? In years of watching Utah's weather, meteorologist Bill Alders never seen anything like it. Why it was so intense, it's hard to say why it was so strong, because that is just not like any event I've ever seen around here. Finding out the secrets of this storm is very important because even the experts say there will be another storm just like this tornado. And maybe, just maybe, next time we'll have a better idea what to expect before the storm takes its toll. Boy, it did a lot of damage in 14 minutes from the downtown area up through the avenues. In Salt Lake City and Norman, Oklahoma, Steve Barron, Fox 13 News.